Hey, how are you doing? Today we will talk about the radiological anatomy of the thorax. In this video, we will learn how to read a normal chest x-ray. We will also take a look at some of the clinically relevant abnormalities seen on the chest x-ray. So let's get started. There are a few facts that one must remember about the chest x-ray. First, the chest x-ray is usually taken in a PA view or the posterior anterior view. In this, the rays are travelling from the posterior aspect of the body towards the anterior. This helps in better visualization of the structures which are closer to the plate anteriorly, that is mediastinum with the heart, trachea, lungs, diaphragm and the bones. In emergency cases or in non-ambulatory patients, we take the AP view or the anterior-posterior view. Other views like the lateral view is taken for better visualization of the posterior mediastinum. Now let us look at some common indications for taking a chest x-ray. Acute dyspnea, chronic dyspnea, acute chest pain, major trauma to the chest, infections like tuberculosis, COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and suspected mass which may be a tumour an enlarged lymph node or a foreign body. To read any x-ray, we have covered four basic steps in our previous video. Now you can apply those steps while reading a chest x-ray. However, for the sake of convenience, we have come up with a simple mnemonic for reading a chest x-ray. The mnemonic is ABCD ABCD. Now before we see in detail what these are, let me just list them for you. A is for air, B is for bones, C is for the cardiac shadow and D is for the diaphragm. The second A is for angles, B is for breast shadow or soft tissue shadows, C is for collection of fluid or effusions and D is for densities like foreign bodies, tumors or enlarged lymph nodes. Now remember, the second C and D that is collection of fluids and densities are abnormal findings. The remaining are normal findings on a chest x-ray. So let's take a look at our first chest x-ray film. First you identify the view and then apply the mnemonic. As I've said before, the view most commonly used for chest x-ray is the PA view. So this is a plain chest x-ray showing the PA view or the posterior anterior view. Now let's follow our mnemonic. The first A it was for air. As we all know, air appears black. So all the black areas are air. Air in chest is found in two structures. The first are the lungs. These are the lung shadows, the right and the left lungs. While taking the x-ray, the patient is asked to take a deep inspiration and hold it so that lungs get filled with air and can be seen better. The lung fields must be clear, that is black. The second structure filled with air is the trachea, which is identified as an air filled black column in the neck. It should be central or midline, lying in front of the lower cervical and upper thoracic vertebrae. If it is deviated to the right or to the left, that is abnormal. These black shadows that you can see here is the gas in the fundus of the stomach. Now coming to B, that is bones. Let's label all the major bones seen here. These are the two clavicles. These are the ribs which are seen very clearly. This is the first rib, the second rib and so on. Remember, these parts that we see are the posterior parts of the ribs. They are seen prominently because they contain more amounts of calcium. Hence, they block more x-rays and cast a better image than the anterior parts of the ribs. C stands for cardiac shadow. This large white shadow that lies in the mediastinum is the heart. The right border from above below is as the right brachiocephalic vein, which is seen as a faint shadow, the shadow of the superior vena cava, the right atrium and the inferior vena cava. The left border from above downwards is the bulge you can see here is known as the aortic knuckle and this is due to the arch of aorta. This is the shadow of the pulmonary trunk, more specifically the left pulmonary artery, the left ventricle. Normally, the cardiac shadow is about 50 to 55% of the transverse diameter of the thorax. In cardiomegaly, 
this percentage is increased. D stands for diaphragm, showing the right and the left domes. This is the right dome of the diaphragm, which lies at the level of about 6th rib anteriorly. The shadow of the liver lies beneath it. This is the left lobe of the diaphragm, which shows gas in the fundus of stomach below it. Now let's take a look at the second sequence of ABCD. A stands for angles. These are the two costophrenic angles. Costo means ribs and phrenic refers to diaphragm. This is the angle between the ribs and the diaphragm as seen here. Normally, this angle is clear and sharp and pointed, but it is obliterated in certain conditions like pleural effusion. We will show you that extra in a few minutes from now. These are the right and left cardiophrenic angles. Cardio means heart. These are the angles between the heart and the diaphragm. It is obliterated in pericardial effusion. B stands for breast or soft tissue shadows. This is how a breast shadow is seen. C stands for collection of fluid, referring to effusions. This is an X-ray of pleural effusion. Look at the obliterated costophrenic angle. Remember, in pleural effusion, the first sign noted on chest X-ray is the obliteration of the costophrenic angles. Another important finding is hydrothorax which is seen as a curved line. It is important to differentiate it from hydropneumothorax, which is seen as a straight line. D stands for densities. It may be an enlarged lymph node or tumor or any foreign body. This is an X-ray showing the foreign body in trachea. Note at this radio opaque density, which is seen here. This is a foreign body. This is an X-ray showing an irregular mass in the chest. This may be a tumor. The special chest X-rays like barium swallow would be covered under the topic of barium studies in our next video. With this, we come to an end on this video on chest X-rays. Hope you enjoyed it and we made it a little easier for you. See you in the next one.